Uh, but next series, we have some some different decks from yesterday, too. So looking forward to that one with Language Attacker and No Hands Gamer. Very much so. Uh, they featured two Warlock decks, which is uh, pretty unusual. But we saw Tice do very well in Europe today with uh, Warlock. We've seen a couple of other heroic Warlock attempts. And it seems like Warlock really just prides itself on its controlling abilities, just turning around the state of the game with their plethora of removal tools and their ability to generate minions, uh, seemingly out of nowhere, highlighted by the Galakron package. Yeah, uh, Language Hacker is playing a little bit of a different version than Tice was playing. Tice was playing the uh, Soul Fragment uh, variation of Galakron Warlock, whereas Language Hacker is playing the old school, uh, where with only a single card from Skullman's Academy in the entire deck, and that is one copy of Colt Neophyte. Everything else is just classic uh, Galakron Warlock uh, from previous sets. So, interesting how that one goes. It seemed like the Soul Fragment healing and ability to uh, generate those, um, uh, just some additional minions and additional like burn damage uh, was uh, kind of nice for Tice uh, from Europe, but we'll see how uh, Language Hacker will do with his. No Hands Gamer, on the other hand, is playing his own patented um, like uh, Suicide the Warlock Pain. He's Pain Warlock, I guess, is the, the, the name for it because he also popularized Pain Warrior or his variation of it, which we called No Hands Warrior for a very long time. So he has Pain Warrior. Now he has Pain Warlock. Uh, it's basically a Zoo Warlock that damages itself a lot in order to get cheap Flesh Giants out and have synergy with cards like Disease Vulture uh, and uh, the Dark Lair. So that one's very interesting. You can get some powerful turns early on. But it also kills itself at an alarming rate, Dan. That's right. Uh, the big pain that you bring is is going to be interesting to see. No Hands Gamer seems to love that archetype in general, which is like, how can I damage or sacrifice my own units and, and a better gain and more power? It feels like that's yeah. kind of the, the way he approaches things. But it feels like he has several different archetypes that he can as his claim to fame, right? It's not even just that. He, he did a really interesting priest build that was utilizing dormant minions and fighting onto the board, uh, heading to the WSOE tournament victory for No Hands Gamer. Uh, he is the new minted GM that has blown a lot of people away with his consistency lately and has possibly the most momentum going into the GM season. I'm excited to see him play. Yeah, he's going to be piloting the Highlander Mage, another weird choice as far as... Uh the current metagame goes. Um, uh, you know, a little bit of a, a smaller curve than what we've been used to as far as uh, like the additional one mana spells that Mage has at the arsenal with Primordial Studies, Devolving Missiles, and Brain, three, brain Freeze added into the arsenal. Uh, Firebrand and Combustion, uh, two other new cards that have been added into Island Mage Arsenal. But overall, the deck plays very similarly to what it did in the past. In this game one, he'll be going up against our T-Mobile deck spotlight of the day, which is the Big Warrior. Uh, from Language Great Hacker, warrior. and uh, uh, I had a conversation with him uh, earlier today about it, since I knew we were going to be featuring on the T-Mobile Deck Spotlight. He said, it dunks Druid, it dunks Mage, it dunks Rogue, it dunks the Mirror, it dunks Warlock, it's bad against Priest. And it's so bad against hyper, hyper Aggro Rogue. Right. And Malagos Druid. So, a couple weak matchups, but he banned Priest. There's no... Uh, is there no Malagos to it <laughs> from the side of No Hands Gamer? I had to double check. And right, from, makes sense. he said it dunks the three decks that No Hands Gamer has in his lineup Mage, Warlock, Druid. So, Language Hacker, if what he's saying is correct, dunk is a very strong word. Okay. <laughs> he sh <laughs> dunk, is like, dunk is like 85 plus percent win rate. You don't use dunk lightly. Really? Interesting. My of it. TJ, when's the last time you've watched a professional basketball game? Uh, 2013. <laughs> Got it. Well, the playoffs have started <laughs> uh, for today, and I was watching a little bit in my lunch break while also multi-screening Grandmasters as well. And I got to say, dunks happen pretty often, so I feel like it's okay to say the word dunk. It's not. I don't think it's that extreme. Uh, but yeah, this this warrior deck dunks everything. Language hacker, of course, uh, looking like a baller. He's or an Eskimo, <laughs> one one of the two. Either it's really cold in Canada, and I'm just not 
aware of that at the moment because it's a burning 100 degrees in Southern California today. Uh, or uh, he's just kind of big chilling in his hoodie and, and succumbing to the dark side. Six, uh, sorry, five classes, two warlocks, which is, just, again, a very unusual choice, but uh, I'm looking forward to see what they got. Also, uh, even though he has no hands gamer, a lot of people are going to be like, wait, he has hands. It's that he plays with no hands. He uses eye tracking technology because he has uh, immense pain from an accent that he had, but you know he doesn't let that define him, which is always one of the more inspiring stories that you can always see in competitors. Um, and so you love to see it. And No Hands Gamer really kind of shown why Hearthstone is quite the unique game for competitors because of how accessible it is for lots of different types of people from different backgrounds. Yeah, even though he's done a ton of interviews about it with various outlets, uh, I'll uh, plug my own here. I did an interview with him that was posted, I think, last week. Uh, or earlier this week, where he kind of went in depth um, about you know how it started and um, how it came to be, uh, finding the, the the software that he uses uh, to track his with his the sensor on his glasses to track his mouse. And what's funny is that he was beating me in games of Hearthstone while we were doing that interview, lounged back like this, hands behind his head, beating me uh in games of hearthstone uh without using his hands and it made me feel real bad but it also made me feel real good you know what i mean yeah because if you know you're kind of like one of the other people in the crew just kind of getting getting the hands from no hands yeah that's right <laughs> felt like a star you know yeah. getting beat by it's gonna be fun Someone it's going to be so fun to watch popular. him not only dunk TJ, but dunk Language Hacker after he dunks him with the Warrior, right? Dunk. That's right. All right, let's see it. Um, all right, so we talked about it a little bit in our spotlight, but uh, basically this deck from uh, Language Hacker revolves around pulling big minions out of his deck, copies of big minions with commencement dimensional ripper. Until it gets to that point, it's really just controlling the state of the game, and it does that super well. There's also a couple things to, to note about the deck. Athletic Studies, which is the uh, studies card for Warrior. Discover a Rush minion, your next one costs one less. Uh, getting the Kargath uh, from that actually has a lot of value as well, because you shuffle in this big 10-10 uh, that gains armor when you rush, uh, when it rushes into a minion. So that's the added benefit of adding yet another big minion into your deck that has insane value with Dimensional Ripper. Oh, yeah. Doesn't get it. Uh, it is weighted more towards class cards when you discover, but obviously it's not 100%. And in this situation, I honestly don't know. I think you have enough big expensive stuff in the deck to where you don't need uh, the 9-9. Um, and the uh, Gyrocopter is kind of like nice medium stats that also has the added benefit of uh, being able to play it proactively and have it sit on board to deal damage. So I like his choice. Yeah, I, I like Hero Copter a lot, um, and it, it's actually pretty reasonably statted at five cost, right? Like, part of what makes the like it's so hard to play is the mana cost of it. But whenever you get it for really cheap or free, like the Power of Creation, I guess it's not really free at that point. But you're playing, you know, those uh, copters for four mana each, with the cost of a Power of Creation, and they start to realize, wow, this this card actually has a lot of application. Um, because Rush is just such an insanely good mechanic. So I like that choice. I also do like the choice of extending onto the board with Astromancer with Solarian, um, just to get some board presence. He's not really trying to combo it with anything. As a Highlander Mage, it does feel like you are sort of just beholden to whatever side of the card or side of the deck that you draw. You just kind of play whatever cards you totally can to use your mana efficiently, and then get to the late game and just kind of get really big minions onto the board with some powerful spells. And the, the the data has kind of implied that Highlander Mage is just much more consistent across the board than the Tempo Mages have been. Uh, but at the same time, their overall win rate seems to be around the same. So it's hard to tell, really. And I think we're still in the early days of the metagame, and I think Highlander Mage has a lot of a lot of power. Like I think people are kind of sleeping on just like how good Zephyrus and some of these Highlander cards still are at the moment because they're 
they're enamored by some of the new cards and mechanics that we have. Yeah, when so the, uh, well, Twilight average power kind of level goes up of a deck, Highlander decks average power level goes up as well uh, because those slots that they were kind of just filling with nonsense, uh, they can fill with good right. stuff. So um, we'll see as time goes on. Um, Langer Tracker can just use the Gyrocopter here to kill off the Twilight Drake, but Blade Storm might be a little bit of a better option, uh, considering uh, Blade Storm can sometimes be a little bit tougher to use as the game goes on because you're not you don't have guaranteed clears and dealing with one thing uh, can sometimes be good. It also allows him to armor up, which make, ensures that uh, if he doesn't pick up a play next turn, he could always just shield slam the uh, Prison Observer and do something else. Um, and yeah, I think I like the Blade Storm just because of its difficulty to use. Yeah, it happens to be pretty good against the two minion generating cards that No Hands Gamer has, which is Power of Creation and Deep Freeze. Uh, Blade Storm but, actually answers it very efficiently. But you're not guaranteed to have those alone. Um, right, right. Yeah. I, I, I understand what you're saying. In this very specific instance, if he drew no more, no more minions and this Imprisoned Server gets dealt with, then the Blade Storm would be nutty, but it's a very situational thing. Yeah. Oh, oh my gosh, Asher another Mancer. Solarian. Oh! I will crush your delusions of grandeur! Question is, can he survive that long once Language Hacker gets to 10 mana and unlocks these dimensional rippers? Yeah. I mean, the part of what Highlander Mage used to represent back when the Lunas Pocket Galaxy meta was upon us, uh, the idea was you would put out really no. big minions for, and then just start to have nonstop waves of threats. And that's kind of the same thing of what Language Hacker deck is trying to accomplish, but just definitely a lot more fair than the Lula Pocket Galaxy approach where you just start playing everything for one. That is an well, expensive hand for both players. <laughs> oh my gosh. Right. Um, no hands picks up the dragon, so you can actually, instead of playing Cartoon Defender, you could just play the Arcane Breath, discover a spell. Oof. Uh. Okay, rolling Fireball for the removal option. Um, you get burned. Instead of, like, Tome of Intellect, because Tome of Intellect would be very inconsistent, and you will need removal in this matchup, because... Usually when you hit this se the seven mana mark is when uh, the warrior starts to uh, really get the ball rolling. And that's when commencement comes online. They can start summoning big things from their deck. The Archmage Vargoth drawn... Uh, pretty unfortunate for Language Hacker because, you know, the nuts is when you dimensional ripper into Archmage Vargoth, which summons two copies of Archmage Vargoth, which then cast... <laughs> Two dimensional rippers, which gives you two more copies of two things in your deck. Um, that's like the crazy play where it's 10 mana, fill the board with massive minions. Um, but uh, a little bit tougher to use when you draw it uh, actually from your deck because a lot of your removal can also target uh, the Archmage Vargoth itself, uh, like Coerce. Um, so. Not the best, but still all those big minions, Rattlegore, uh, still left in the deck. No Hands Gamer just going to play a little bit uh, proactively here with the Siamot. I like it. Divine Shield, Wind Fury, force Language Hacker to have to react to it instead of trying to uh, coin out this Power of Creation or Deep Freeze because um, the Siamot is the guaranteed stats where you never know what you're going to get with Power of Creation. And coin has a lot of value here for if he needs to play Puzzle Box uh, one turn sooner. Oh, yeah. I mean, Puzzle Box is still very good. Usually Puzzle Box is at its best when you have a narrower set of spells, so it's more consistent at what it does. But with such a high power level expansion, it turns out that a lot of the spells that Puzzle Box can play are still pretty good. Um, as, yeah. you know, speaking of powerful spells, Chorus is one of them. Destroy a damaged minion, but when you combo it, 
straight up actually just destroy the minion. Um, so, you know, normally at the beginning of rotations, cards like Puzzle Box tends to have that higher power level, but for this expansion, it seems very solid. Dragon Caster goes to seven mana. This is a change to the card used to cost six, but still very good um, in Highlander Mage decks. And that just means that you get it out a little bit slower. You don't get to Dragon Caster and do the crazy expensive card stuff like Power Creation or Puzzle Box of Yaxron. Wow. Sergeant so Commander or Sun Walker, both very good tools. One to pressure and one to defend your board state. Not sure which one's better, honestly, um, because um, the bra brawl exists. If that's the case, you want to get immediate value with Argent Commander. But if he doesn't have brawl, then obviously Sun Walkers are better. Um, yeah. Language Tracker point out one of the weaknesses of this Warrior deck is that it does lack armor gain because it doesn't play uh, what the Norris Warriors normally play, which is the Versi Skipper plus Armorsmith package, which allows a huge burst of armor uh, later on to the game. Um, and this uh, Deathwing Mad Aspect doesn't even clear the board because of the Divine Shields, so I don't even know what the, uh, the play is here. Just Troublemaker and hope you snipe off one and force no hands to uh, kind of uh, deal with the large 6-8 body. Grom sort of serves the same purpose, where you're guaranteed killing off a 4-4, four -four and you still leave a body around that needs to be dealt with. This Dimensional Ripper from Lango Tracker is going to have to be huge, but one of the downsides to Dimensional Ripper in this big warrior deck is that what none of the big minions that you run have taunt. There's Rattlegore, Troublemaker, Grom Hellscream, Deathwing Mad Aspect, Archmage Vargoth... They're all big, valuable minions, but they don't have taunt. So if your opponent has a big board, they can just bypass it. And you're spending an entire 10-mana turn to play it. That's why commencement is so important, because it does give it a taunt shield taunt. Oh, it does snipe it. Nice. Wow. Oh, <laughs> oh my gosh. Language hacker, of course, with the OK sign. He is okay with that outcome, as are we. Yeah. But, you know, this is why I like the Argent Commander pick from No Hands Gamer. He's He got the 8 damage in, continuing the pressure. Now his Dimensional Ripper doesn't exactly guarantee anything. And Language Hacker's also drawn a lot of his big minions. Also, avoid drawing any more of them. There it is. Whoa. There it is. It's a lot of gore. Yeah, it was that or Troublemaker were the only two minions he had left in his deck. So it was a 50-50 to uh, get the Rattlegore from that right. Dimensional Ripper. Honestly, I wouldn't have even minded Troublemaker because with two of them, you would have summoned the 6 3 threes at the end of the turn, which could have also cleared off the board mm. for you. Oh, Ooh. Uh, still could play Deep spells. Freeze, though. Yeah, or Puzzle Box. Um, I like Deep Freeze better. I like holding the Puzzle Box... You're still kind of head on board. You're definitely yeah. head on board now with the, the two water elementals, and you're pressuring. I think it makes more sense, but this kind of leaves language hacker free to play brawl. Yeah. I wonder where this attack goes Pick first. Reaper Scythe. Reaper Scythe is uh, a card that gets activated with spell burst, gives you a cleave effect. But it's looking to me like the brawl. Yeah, he's definitely going to brawl there. It was a matter of, like, does the attack go into the Divine Shield or does it go face? Oh, he won oh the my. brawl! The frozen Rattlegore won and comes back. How does, the, how does that work? Minus one, minus one. How You're does that work? You're sending things into fight, the frozen one wins. <laughs> It just doesn't it make sense by staying from a out of the fight, TJ. It does. It, everyone killed each other, okay. and the one that chose to abstain from the fight survived. <laughs> ah, so it's a it's metaphor. More, it's more, yeah, it's, it's a metaphor. It's kind of like a cryo chamber, if you will. Like yeah. he stayed frozen, and everything else just kind of died around him. Yeah. Oh. Okay. Oh, it's so good. Huge pickup. Now he just plays another but Dimensional like Ripper. Yeah, and he might just get two more Rattlegores. I mean... Yep. 
that? <laughs> it was that or Troublemaker, Jeez. and honestly, Troublemaker would have been problematic because it would have been 12 damage to face. Right. And it would have set up a uh, Grom. Slam. Yeah, so now it's probably going to, unless this Reno bails him out, uh, either he has to go for Puzzle Box, right? Because uh, Malagos uh, doesn't even have a Dragon in hand to be able to go for the uh, Frost Nova. Um, and even then, that would just be stalling the inevitable because Language Hacker is still at 11 health, which is still out of reach uh, for this Island of Mage. That first could also be pick up Moonfire to his own face. Wow. Mm. Great job, Reno. All right, Brain Freeze. That can bail him out if his puzzle box doesn't go super well. Right. He can always freeze whatever minion stays alive, but here we go first of many presents that we might be seeing and turn button green so he has nothing that he can interact with oh no oh okay wait wait a second a lot of these are not doing anything okay getting armor oh uh, um. can't freeze anymore <laughs> that's why tj dragon queen Alex draws a nerfed again oh oh, oh my god wait Okay. Oh no. Wait, that's really bad. Oh, oh no, no. That's so bad. GJ hits so awful. He's just dead. He's dead. He, the secret passage. You know, when I said that Puzzle Box of Yogg-Saron got some powerful stuff, I guess I, I didn't really account for cards like Secret Passage to really mess things up. I mean, most of the time, you, you're not even playing anything else, but. No Hands Gamer was like, oh, okay, well, if the puzzle box doesn't go super well, I can always coin Brain Freeze one of these and buy myself some time, right. maybe draw Zephyrus or Solarian Prime, but uh, yeah, he's dead. Grom from hand doesn't even need to get it enraged. And that'll be Language Hacker. Big Warrior! Duncan! On the Highlander Mage, Dan. Yeah, very, very much dunked. Very big. Well done to Language Hacker's big warrior. He tweeted before. The series began saying, uh, if he doesn't win, he's probably going to throw horribly. Like, in the sense that it's like he feels that his deck, his lineup is so good that if he doesn't win, it's because he decided, or rather, he was not able to, like, perform and execute cleanly because he says that the decks are great. Wow. So. I, I, I'm starting to believe it. Big Warrior looked really strong against Highlander Mage, which gave it a lot of time. Yeah, it, it not a lot of decks are going to give it time, but you could still tell that he had removal tools left. Like, he never even had to use, like, ramming speed. Um, he was able to use Bladestorm just on a Twilight Drake. Um, the Brawl situation was, you know, a little bit sketchy because he, was, he had taken a lot of damage, but uh, honestly, uh, it did look good. Uh, if the... The troublemaker didn't snipe one of the Archer commanders. That would have been a lot closer. Let's 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 be honest. So he did get a bailed out slightly True. with that, but you know, still it was. Uh, I think that that was the the deck performing well. Yeah, yeah, totally. And I think that um, No Hands Gamer also had a really unfortunate puzzle box. Like it didn't stop any of the damage, and it added to the damage. It gave yeah. his opponent, you know, that lethal in his mind. And yeah. so, uh, overall, that's like a pretty low roll from the mage in terms of the puzzle box scenario. However, uh, we are, you know, we get to see that mage play again. And we'll see if Language Hacker can continue that momentum, or whether or not, uh, you know, the No Hands Gamer will be able to start that comeback. In the meantime, we're going to get ready for our next break and intermission. So we're going to take a few minutes. And when we come back, we're going to have the rest of the series between Language Hacker and No Hands Gamer. Dumb accomplishment. I don't think there really are dumb accomplishments. I think if you decide something is important and you work for it and you achieve it, uh, that is important. I once uh, stayed up for, I think, like 50 hours? Doing what? I don't remember. <laughs> that usually happens when people stay up for 50 yeah. hours. I was able to win a game of Hearthstone as Mage with Clockwork Automatons. 
So you would just double the damage of your hero power six or seven times until it's 30, and then you ping your opponent and they die. And I, and I was really proud of that. My hallway back at home in my apartment, some of the light bulbs have burned out, and I was able to go to the store and purchase a light bulb, the wrong one, but I still managed to make it out of the house and back, so that was, that was good. Uh, it's, it's fácil. Eh, mi mayor logro medio tonto que estoy orgulloso es haber llegado a leyenda en Hearthstone. <laughs>to Hearthstone Grandmasters for the Americas region, day number two of our kickoff week. Uh, we are one game in to Language Hacker versus No Hands, which is already kind of living up to the hype as we have some unusual decks and lineups, which I love to see. I love that Language Hacker and No Hands Gamer both are players that are newer to GM. They're new to GM this year, and both are kind of uh, you know well-known for being able to go against the grain lineup-wise and are both very confident in their deck-building abilities. And I love that they both made top eight and they're in the same group and in the same match. It's just great, TJ. There's a lot of things going on. Let's go to game number two where No Hands Gamer is going to be playing his Pain Zoo Warlock, a deck that he tweeted a lot. He climbed to top legend with it immediately after the expansion had launched. And it seems like something that he is very fond of. And we all know what happens when No Hands Gamer's attention is taken by a specific deck in the expansion. Yeah, he masters it. He plays it a lot. Yeah. And yes. he consistently stays at those high legend ranks. Uh, this deck is dangerous, though. Um, it, am your it's pain more like because it can damage itself so much. You have Raise Dead, you have Flame Him, you have the Hero Power, you have Tour Guide, which gives you cheaper Hero Powers. You're super incentivized to just keep damaging yourself because of 
uh, the reduction of flesh giants because of the mana uh, gain from dark glare uh, because of diseased vulture um, you, you are sometimes reliant on the soul fragments to bail you out of situations where you would otherwise die that you'd get from soul shear spirit and spirit jailer it was very interesting but on the other hand you know there's still the expired merchant hand of Gul'dan combo along with nightshade matron that is a super a valuable draw engine to the deck that's what allows you to uh kind of you know spam out your hand damage yourself get minions back uh and work your way towards those big flush giant turns yeah that's right um so you know th <laughs> there's some really powerful turns this warlock is capable as you were describing um and we're talking about flesh giant being one of them don't forget just like straight up having good discard synergy with expired merchant and having nightshade matron with hand of gold is just like really really powerful in itself and you're able to get a lot of tempo um and zeus just also really efficient now that being said warlock also is you know one of the best classes at dealing with zoo aggression because they have a lot of aoe and damage uh to deal with it early on and so language hacker does have a pretty good matchup. The only thing is that Sacrificial Pact since it's changed to only target friendly demons. So uh, that's not exactly the card that has a big, profound impact the way it used to. It's just now kind of a nice heal in, in some tight spots. Yeah. But with how many demons you generate with all of the invoke cards, usually pretty easy to get because you want to tap so aggressively early on in the game and draw cards so aggressively at all stages of the game. It makes it so that uh, you really want to uh, have that sacrificial pack to be able to heal back up. Um, kind of replaces the soul fragments in the soul fragment variation of the warlock. Mm -hmm. uh, but language hacker decided to play the classic version, and No Hands does have a pretty powerful turn next turn, though he doesn't have the hand space for it. Uh, which is slightly awkward. It's Disease Vulture with Raise Dead. But it would basically be trading Raise Dead for like one minion and, or yeah, two minions and a three drop. Maybe you just use one and then accept the burn? Hmm. That's tough. Alternatively, he could just play a three four. Uh, with the Shadowlight Scholar, but that does have the benefit of being burst damage later on uh, once you have Soul Fragments in your deck. You could also just play Diseased Vulture, not get any value from it this turn, try and dump some cards from his hand next turn. Yes, we'll fill up his hand. Yeah, I, I like the, the Diseased Vulture play simply because it's trying to get the most stats out as possible. Um, and your opponent doesn't have the ability to play crazy another one. This might be a, a second raise dead, um, which I think has merit as well for that very same reason. Like this is the turn to try to capitalize before the warlock starts to get everything online. Wow, pretty unusual set of plays here, but that's what you want to see. Finds <laughs> life weaver, which if he gains life, he gets some random druid cards, which are pretty interesting. <laughs> he has no soul fragments right now, but he can with soul shear. Um, yeah. Uh, so one of the other things that's kind of weird with this deck, uh, expired merchant can actually be very valuable on flesh giants early on in the game. Um, usually uh, players tunnel on expired merchant plus hand of Gul'dan combo because it's very powerful. It draws you a lot of cards, but expired merchant hitting flesh giant. Um, if you have enough cards already, uh, having an additional 8-8 that's going to be super cheap later on in the game is highly valuable. And so that was one of the reasons I might have uh, thought about holding on to the second raise dead to keep the um, Flesh Giant at 6 to then try and, uh, so with a full hand, discard, discard the Flesh Giant instead of so the Hand of Full Band. Um, but that's kind of wishful thinking because it was a one and three at that, and you don't want to fill up your hand. And maybe he just wanted to guarantee the draw and go for a powerful turn like this because he has drawn a lot of cards, and uh, with the uh, Ebonlock can uh, dump this Voidwalker that he picked up from the race dead. Why do you 
Yeah, it does have to be mindful of the crazed netherwing turn, though. So if he doesn't have trading into this Iron Beak Owl, if he uses any of his five health minions, he's open to it. Yeah. And, I, and I think that you don't want to lose these minions unnecessarily. No. Honestly, I'd... I'm not even sure if you acknowledge uh, this Iron Beak Owl. Yeah, I think you don't. There's not really enough minions for Plague of Flames to be super threatening on it. So it looks like No Hands Gamer agrees. And he has two Soul Fires, which means that he can actually try to even kill next turn. Ooh. Wow, the second Crazed Netherwing falls into the hand. He didn't have a dragon prior to that. Still or rather, he didn't have another dragon. Still is five power on board. And you also deal three damage to yourself. Right. Heartburn so doesn't really matter here. No hands very close to lethal, or a potential lethal. Um... He also, if he can bank a Soul Shard here, which he does have these, or Soul Fragment, excuse me, um, with Soul Shear, he does have the Shadowlight Scholar to be able to deal three more burst damage. So many. Uh, but he can only target minions, so he'd be targeting a minion, which would incentivize a trade. Uh, I don't know. He could actually, like, Soul Shear and then Shadowlight Scholar and keep his minions alive. I think so Soul Shear and the Shadow Light Scholar is a little bit like too. I, I think I want to play all of that next turn because that's seven mana, right? You can yeah. Soul Shear, uh, go for the damage, Battle Cry, and then finish off with two Soul Fire, right? Yeah, but then you dump your hand more on a single turn. It reduces the chance that you actually get the. The double soul fire off is now like next turn if a minion sticks you can tap to fill your hand up completely then double soul fire oh i suppose but so moarg plus nether breath yeah that's huge plus mortal and coil. mortal coil wow big swing and i mean that's kind of what galakron warlock really does it's just the heals for a ton so many he has a lot of damage to itself in the process yeah um, and even if Language Hacker was super desperate, he had the option to even sacrifice to pack his own Morg as well. Probably not going to be the case given that he's usually saving it for imp that he invokes off his Galakron. And that's probably why No Hands Gamer ultimately was not trying to go for that burst. Like like I said, that his, he had 7 mana, he could have gone for like a surprise lethal attempt, but a lot of times this deck understands what it can and can't do so language hacker will be playing around that kind of stuff all the time yeah time for another expired merchant <laughs> at this point the hand of gold dance are starting to become pretty annoying it's clogging up his hand he doesn't really want to cast it he's having hand size issues oh no uh oh wow that actually draws cards in his deck yeah Sal's it does. pride it draws anything that it draws one health minion from your deck which includes tour guide expired merchant which i think he's already played two of um uh, so he doesn't want to actually keep drawing those well, cards it's tour guide and spirit jailer oh you're right you're right you're right spirit jailer <laughs> Man, that was one health not one attack Oh, yeah, you're, right. you're actually right. So it's only Tour Guide. At the moment, yeah. Damn, imagine if Spirit Chiller was a 3 1 instead of a 1 3. That'd be sick. Ah, oh, okay. So, no meaningful invokes. So, can't play Veiled Worshipper. Um. He's got Devoted Maniac and Plague of Flames as a way to deal with this right now. Probably yeah. a little overkill. Um, Can't fit in a tap. But I like that. the invoke. Yeah, I like the invoke. I like the fact that you get to use your um, Sacrificial Packs as well. Well, if he also, if he had played Shield of Galakrond, it would have meant that he didn't get a life tap, but then he could have played. Uh, Devoted Maniac plus Veiled Worshipper the following turn. Ha! <laughs> the natural draw on the tour guide. 
All right. Um, so we could play Giants with a Plague of Flames being used this turn, which means that um, there's less removal options for Language Hacker. Oh my gosh. Handicle Dance not going to do much. He still had a natural one. He's had so many Handicle Dances. Yeah. It's insane. That's right. Um, oh god, his hand's actually like a lot of fluff, to be quite honest. With three hands of Gul'dan. Yeah, he can still dump it and just essentially draw the rest of his deck and dump a tour guide at the end of this or uh, whatever he may pick up. Ooh. Spear Jailer as well. Yeah. Let the board make the second Plague of Flames have to work a little bit harder in order to get this Flesh Giant. But he's real right. close. Real close. Very close indeed. There is a Twisting Nether in the deck. Another Dragon would be great too. Finds Plague of Flames. Mm. He's got to snipe it one way or the other. I mean, he can tap as well. Tap allows him to potentially find something for Moark so if he has uh, AoE that can activate, like Dark Skies. Yeah. It's not that great, actually, now that 8 8's there. Um, wow, this uh, Warlock deck is just having the wrong half of the deck meeting each other. Yeah. If he. Taps, he can also pick up a dragon and then craze Netherwing plus Plague of Flames. Oh, Ooh. wow. Moarg in second Nether Breath. There's an option as well where he could choose to play like Shield of Galarcon and double Sacrificial Pack and just kind of tank that damage. Yeah. But I think that's a little bit too much risk for my taste because he can yeah. do that next turn while also playing the Veiled Worshiper. A lot of removal tools here. What's the timing to play Kenrethed Prime? Is it just after this wave has been dealt with? Yeah, I mean, there are a good amount of a reasonably sized demons in the deck. You have, uh, like, Nightshade Matron, Dark Lair. Flame Imps, I suppose, are decent. Right. Um, so Shear will actually kill the Moarg because the Moarg double damage for everybody. Part of its uh, air quote downside. Yeah. So No Hands has eight cards in his deck, but uh, well, five of those are soul fragments. That's right. Uh, now no Hands actually doesn't have that many cards left, but he's got two Ken Red Primes. One, you know, stocked up in that expired merchant. Yeah. And, I mean, this board it can't be ignored also. Like, it's just going to keep chipping him down. Yeah. Ooh, Twisting Nether. Oh, but if he uses Twisting Nether, he doesn't have an answer to the can with that. Right. Prime. Which is kind of what I was saying. Like, is it better to shield of Galakron and double Sacrificial Pact and then play Veiled Worshipper? Just kind of keep that instead and hmm. hope that your 23 life plus your taunt will be enough to stall because yeah i think that's the play. to trade minions into the board yeah i think that's a, honestly a really good play um because he needs to find those big tools he needs to find like an active zephyrus he needs to find dragons so he has crazy netherwing to be able to follow things up dark skies right. to be able to clean <laughs> if only <laughs> if only <laughs> uh, but is that a comfortable 23 so, and For I now. mean, th these minions are not super easily dealt with, but uh, No Hits Gamer has to start worrying about fatigue here. He does have the uh, Brittle Bone Destroyers, but um, I think seven out of those ten cards were Soul Fragments at the beginning of his turn. Jeez. There's four. Brittle. <laughs> Sorry, uh, Flesh Giant should be uh, very cheap right now. I kind of like a Brittle Bone Destroyer here and not extending too much d deeper onto the board because you don't want you don't want to like trade everything then play a Kenrith at Prime then your opponent just answers with a very defensive uh, AoE. I feel like you can squeeze out more value out of this board. Or oh wait, that was the other expired merchant. I was like, wait, I thought he had Conrethid Prime. 
Yeah. Uh, another problem for No Man's Gamer is that I'm pretty sure uh, at least one of the, these like bottom three cards, I think he has three actual cards left remaining, are Nightshade Matrons. Which, at a certain point, he won't even be able to play because it'll just kill him. I guess he'll discard a Hand of Gul'dan if he dumps this other camera that Evan Lock. Or camera that Prime. Oh. This is a pretty suboptimal uh, Twisting Nether. Also, can Red the Prime bring back the Voidwalkers has been actually very annoying. Because um, even if he did have the Quay's Nether Wing, it would stop this Veiled Worshipper from being able to get a nice trade. I do like drawing cards here because I think he needs to dig deeper. Finds Zephyrus. Zephyrus. Oh, Zephyrus Shadow Flame? No, it's not quite enough. Uh, okay, Plague of Flames. Plague of Flames. Yep. He also knows another Kenrathed Prime is coming out now. Yep. Uh, which means No Hands Gamer really has to make, make something happen here. Yeah. Language Tracker's got so many checks. Like right. three waves Twisting of removal, Nether. essentially. Twisting Nether, Dark Sky, Zephyrus. Crazy Nether Wing. Uh, even just Galakron can help provide some of that. Ooh. Big draw off the top here. Can Nether Prag pin summon... Think about what the biggest demons they can summon back are. It is the Dark Glare. Yeah, it's just Dark Glare. He hasn't played the Nightshade Matrons yet, I don't think. And now his Nightshade Matrons oh, are shut right. off because he'll fatigue out of the game. So, feels like Language well, Hacker might have to check. Them. Oh, he burned one of them, okay. And he has at least one Soul Fragment left, I think. Uh, language hacker, I think, has a clear with dark. Uh, well, he's a clear with twisting nether, but I think the crazed nether wing also with the mortal coil and the dark sky is pretty good. Less clean. So I think I would require him to lose his own stuff. And now, no man's gamer is just out of stuff. Yep. Um, and you, you know, maybe it kind of goes back to something that you were talking about, which is just running into an issue of just not having enough gas, right? Like, because he has so many copies of the Hand of Gul'dan. But, like, if they were Flesh Giants, it'd be a completely different story. Yeah, if he was able to, like, pace out more 8-8s throughout the mid-game, could have made Language Hacker's turns a lot more awkward. Right. Um, but now, no, he has, just, he has nothing. Like, there, he doesn't even have enough enough minions left to be able to deal the final points of damage. Right. He's Especially if one of his last cards... Outmatched. Yeah, it's... Language Hacker just... He, he just killed everything. That's it. That's He didn't even have to deal any damage to his face. He just killed everything. Right. Yep. I think the Soul Fragments are all that's left here. Yep, when the Nightshade oh, wait, Matron, which is dead, but... because he'll just draw himself further into fatigue. All right, well, Control Warlock beats the Zoo Warlock, a, a tale that has been pretty common uh, in Hearthstone's history. And now we get to see if whether or not Language Hacker can close out this series with the Priest. Um, Language Hacker's Priest, I believe, is he playing the Highlander Priest version? No, he's uh, playing no. Uh, Galakron, but an emphasis on control by playing things like Plague of Death, which is not very common in Priest decks right now. Yeah, and no Cabal Acolyte, uh, no Wave of Apathy, um, similar to what we saw from Firebat, uh, except he does play uh, the Mind Render Lucia, uh, which I feel like you just need to play that card. There's so many decks in the metagame that just yeah, get absolutely so ruined by Lucia. Uh, Mage, I think, is the big one where you can just completely dump their hand when you know that they're holding on to like the Sorcerer's Apprentice combo. And obviously, there's pl you can play around it by going off earlier with the combo. Um, sometimes it can be uh, tough to use um, because you don't want to give your opponent some of your high value cards, but uh, it's a crazy, it's an insane card right now. So I like the fact that he's playing that, and the con more control variation your is uh, interesting because I have loved the Cabal Acolyte combo. 
Um, but it is situational. It's so fun. <laughs> it, but it, it is yeah. situational, and I understand why he's cutting it. He's going for that more consistent uh, control approach, uh, which uh, right. al- also has a ton of merit, right? It's just a different way to play it. And sometimes you do need that extra yeah. bit of removal, and Cabal Acolyte against decks that flood the board is, you know, sometimes it, you're having to use a spell to just steal like a 1-2 or uh, something small, right? Yeah. I, I think I think on ladder, Cabal Acolyte is imperative because it sometimes just stops like Libram Paladin and Guardian Druid right right in their tracks. They play like Twilight Guardian, they have nothing to attack into, or sorry, Twilight Runner, they have nothing to attack into, or they use their Librams. Then you just Cabal Acolyte and steal it. Um, and they are really sad. Yeah. In tournaments, though, I can totally understand how people can play around that and make your life really difficult, um, especially if they're playing decks like Zoo. So overall, I, I understand it. And Plague of Death is its still a really good removal tool, despite it being expensive. It's one of the most expensive spells in the game, but its effect is almost out. It's not really matched by anything except like the Amazing Reno. Yeah. So yeah, I, I, I appreciate it. Um, there's nothing really that tells me that Language Hacker should try to play for tempo here with Clerica Scales. I think this looks like a pass. Well, he, he could go for a new uh, if he thinks that he'll need to be mana efficient. I think that's probably what he was thinking about there is, do I just renew now, try and pick up a spell that I will um, always almost always need so that way I can be more mana efficient with my turns in the future? But it would waste the healing, and maybe he doesn't exactly know what he needs now. Even though this uh, Warlock deck is one-dimensional, um, you don't know how fast they're going to be able to get the big threats out. So you don't know when you'll need things, and he hasn't. He probably wants to see a couple more draws before he knows what he wants from Renew to make up for some of the weaknesses that his hand has. Like right now, for instance. <laughs> I think that, I mean, he gets three heal now. Um, I think you're right. Like, he's, he doesn't necessarily need to be mana efficient with all this AoE right now. Ooh. Okay. Little bone destroyer. destroyer. All right. I think you tap first and then uh, play Torguide after so you can disease vulture tap next turn. Uh, but Disease Vulture just by itself also kind of has similar benefit because you're kind of expecting some form of AoE to come down this turn to deal with the board, and Disease Vulture would uh, line up better against that, and you can stick it. There's very little ways uh, for a Priest to deal with a 3-5 on, on this early in the game because they don't run uh, Shadow or Pain anymore. Obviously, you could have gotten it from the Renew, but you're not going to play around randomly generated cards. Again. It's an awkward board, honestly. The three health makes these two AoE spells uh, quite rough. Yeah, definitely not a fun situation to be in when you start to see what can come out of here. A speaker Gidra. Oh yeah. Hits the board. He's got a time that's that. take. He's got to time rip that. Job's done. Yikes. Uh, Brittle back. So Brittle Bone Destroyer still not eligible to be using his battle cry right now. Well, he could uh, Cleric of Scales and get Ray's dead. Okay, that's true. Um, but there's so many spells still up in his deck, it's like slightly less than 50% that he'd be offered the Raise Dead. Because he has Draconic Studies, Renew, Shadow or Death, Apotheosis, Breath of the Infinite, Shadow or Ruin. Oh no, it's way less than 50% actually because he's running additional spells because he's running Second Time Rip and Plague of Death. So not consistent enough, unfortunately. Uh, so looks like Tour Guide gets him that free hero power. All right. Finds a Brittle Bone Destroyer number two. He's a little bit off from playing that Flesh Giant right now. Yeah, and he would have to destroy one of his own minions with Brittle Bone Destroyer. 
if he wanted to play that. He could change one of his, he could like kill his uh, tour guide. I wonder. Like just turn a 1 1 into a 3 3. But I mean, honestly, I think you, you, I think you just do it because you just want pressure right now. And at six mana, three damage AoE is still hard to come by. I'm inclined to agree. Oh, wow, okay. But it looks like No Hands Gamer does not. Instead, he really just wants to prioritize removing the threats. And it makes sense because Priest starts to do some pretty uh, powerful stuff around this mana cost. Because they're usually combining a couple of cards together. <clears throat> um... Hmm. I'm tr I think he's only invoked one time, though, so it's not like Fate Weaver plus a bunch of other stuff can really start to to mess with him. But from turn seven onwards, usually Priest also uh, unlocks like another tier of power uh, with Galakrond and their Soul Mirror abilities. Yeah. Just doesn't really apply too much against Zoo All Warlock, which seems to be doing a good job. Staying just outside the range. Soul Mirror for next turn is huge. Yeah, that's a big one. Raise that allows him to kill now. Elsa does the damage though, which. I think you're, you're trying to keep your health total high because if you have answers to all of the board, you're just worried about burst damage. And while this deck doesn't right. pack a ton of burst damage, it has some with Soul Fires plus the one uh, Shadowlight Scholar. Yeah, that makes sense. Oh, and Soul Fragment Jaws, oh, that wow. means Flesh Giant is fragment. playable. Exactly. But he just you're going into turn seven. Language Hacker's been piecing together some some weird turns. And he just cleric of scales. So I I don't think I want to play that Flesh Giant into uh uh Soul Mirror turn. Greed. And Language Hacker actually might be in some trouble here just because uh, Soul Bear still leaves three damage on the board uh, because of that Dark Glare. And the Dark Glare also has the additional benefit of allowing No Hands Gamer to have some extra mana to work with. And No Hands given the nod, like, yep, glad I didn't play my Flesh Giant. Now I have some follow up. Okay, well, he has infinite mana. <laughs> yeah, card draw is the limitation, limiting factor here. He just wants to play Flesh Giant and nothing else? Uh, well, he wants to spend his mana oh, first he because his hero power costs zero. That's right. Because he would waste the effect of the uh, uh, Dark Lair if he had done anything else first. So, I mean... You're right, you're right. <clears throat> uh, you expired Merchant... I guess if you expired Merchant, you have Soulfire if Hand of Gold Land comes off the top, and the Brittle Born Destroyers honestly could be pretty good for, for keeping up tempo. So, yeah, yeah, and I'm just dumping the second one too, just to be able to push this three damage and, and have it be safe. Soulfire, though, probably holding on to uh, just in case you draw Hand of Gold Land, it's always going to be that four damage. Oh, Apotheosis. It's not really what he needs. Um, um, you have your own Brittle Bone Destroyer, and you can extend onto the board mm. after that. It's not really great, though. I think he might be dead. He's going to Brittle Bone Destroy here in Grand Mummy, and yeah, looks like No Hands Gamer is going to take a win here against the Priest. It's just a little bit too fast. It, it seemed yeah. like, you know, the priest had the tools, but Disease Vulture getting so much value really pushed it deck over the top, and uh, No Hands Gamer has very clean victory. Not really challenged whatsoever, and the Zoo Warlock able to get a dub. Zoo Warlock for No Hands Gamer has uh, performed Rather, I'm looking at the stats of overall. It's been okay, slightly under 50% uh, for its win rate, and it's played about 100 games. But for No Hands Gamer specifically, the Warlock's been uh, pretty solid. It went 6-3, and three, mm. now 7-4. and four. So uh, definitely a positive win rate deck, which has helped him a lot.
Yeah, and you could tell he did a good job of just making it awkward for language hacker, understanding how the Galakarn Priest deck works, that it struggles to deal with uh, things that have more than two health, not overextending into Soul Mirror to make sure that he had the Flesh Giant to follow it up. Um, uh, just very well done, and you could tell just how... <laughs> I think uh, Ollie wants to come on camera. Um, he's yelling at me. Uh, but yeah, uh, language hacker, I feel like in those situations, you maybe you try and take more risks. Maybe like the Cleric of Scales into Ray's Dead to try and get that uh, Brutal Bone Destroyer out earlier to gain some tempo back. Play off the top of your deck a little more instead of trying to plan ahead um, with what you have. Uh, maybe there were some turns that he could have played a little bit differently, but honestly, I think that was just the Warlock being a little too fast, no hands gamer making it awkward in spots where he needed to make it awkward and just playing it well. Yeah, no hands gamer definitely did a good job making it painful for Priest to remove a lot of that stuff. So we're just going to turn to his Mage deck, Mage against Priest here. Looking at how overall it's done, seems like Priest versus Mage matchup has been relatively poor for the priest. Uh, I guess we don't have a much, we don't have a very big sample size though, because not many people are bringing Highlander Mage in particular. Yeah, only two players so in America. Only much one data, in the top four. Gonna, yeah, I would just say that there's not enough to to make significant conclusions based off that data. Uh, Language Hacker, of course, keeps Galakron probably the most important card for him long term against Highlander Mage. Job done. Yeah. I just feel like with all the time that Priest gives the Highlander Mage, though, it's going to be hard for the Highlander. I mean, this is a good matchup for the Mage on paper. Um, but it really does. This might be one of the grindier matches we see today when it comes down to. You know, what kind of spells do you generate from mage, and then what kind of minions do you generate for priest? Yeah, it, it, I mean, this match it gives both decks a lot of time, and both decks can thrive when given a lot of time. I will crush your delusion, so, it's kind of hard to call it uh, right now, even though if you look at the limited sample size we have, that mage does well. And having an extra Astromancer Solarian. Uh, is a nice added benefit. Because sometimes if you're pushing damage later on in the game, Solarian Prime can give you that little extra boost. And No Hands Gamer can feel pretty comfortable just playing Astromancer Solarian onto the board, knowing that there's no Cabal Acolyte Wave of Apathy combo, there's no Cabal Acolyte just in general. He doesn't play Shadow Madness in his deck, it would have to be generated from uh, like Sethic Bellweaver or uh, Renew. So does get pretty much a guaranteed Slayer and Prime. Now off to the slow races, but Escape Mana Saber will allow No Hands Gamer to at least keep up tempo. Yeah, keeping up that tempo is really important um, just to keep threatening. I am wondering how Mind Under Lucia can be utilized in this matchup in particular. Seems like Language Hacker okay with just dumping his hand. I guess he doesn't want a situation where he just can't, doesn't feel comfortable uh, adding cards to his hand because, I mean, Mind Render Lucia can really mess things up. If you have a small hand, you take your opponent's deck and you play a bunch of stuff. It's mainly good against combo decks and aggro, though, because if you're playing against Highlander Mage, like, what, what are you going to do when you steal their hand immediately afterwards? Everything's so expensive. Yeah, maybe you can time it for like Zephyrus or Dragon Queen Alexstrasza, but even with Dragon Queen Alexstrasza, you can't play it because it's nine mana you spent two unless you dump the coin with it, and then you're not playing the one mana dragons that you generate, so you hand them right back. Um, uh, weirdly enough, I, th I think there might have been some merit to devolving missiles there. Uh, just because if Language Hacker is playing out a Sethic Veilweaver that's going to get uh, eaten up by a Escape Mana Saber almost guaranteed... He's okay with it dying, which means maybe Raise Dead is there, and he can get a ton of value that on that later on in the game. And if you mess up his Raise Dead pool with uh, something terrible, a, a Wisp or whatever that Zermanid Demon thing is um, from Devolving Missiles, that might have uh, some impact. But 
I think the biggest thing from No Hands Gamer is he wanted to keep his uh, Mana Saber around uh, because now he can go six drop here and then uh, either ramp into Power of Creation next turn or go even greedier than that, keep it stealth one more turn and then uh, go for the Dragon Queen Alexstrasza uh, turn sooner than he'd be able to. So. Invoke. <laughs> Yeah, I like this. I, I don't think we're in a rush to necessarily get the Galakron um, online and hero powering here. It looks like uh, Lego Tracker is just taking it very slow and trying to get uh, get the Galakron to potentially have bigger battle cry effects. Speaking of big battle cry effects, I wonder if No Hands Gamer wants to play his Malakos or play Power of Creation. Power of Creation Ooh. is immediately more tempo. Another set of Argent Commanders, but. Onyx Mage Scribe is also very good. I think I love on Onyx Mage Scribe here because that's a 4-9. It's very hard to deal with, but pressure is pressure. Looks like he wants to just go for it. I think it's pretty close. I, I generally yeah. like the Argent Crusaders because it helps pressure, but I mean, the Mage Scribes could have been even worse. Yeah, I mean, this is working out because Language Attacker doesn't have a great way to deal with this. He actually doesn't have a, a way to deal with it, period. Um, maybe he goes for a Desperation Mind Render here and uh, potentially give up his Galakrond. But like you said earlier, a lot of times when you Mind Render, you're expecting a lot of expensive things, especially since No Hand Scammer didn't have the fastest start. He is probably holding on to that expensive stuff. All right, so Aeon Reaver to just dead. try and stop some of this damage, but he's taken a lot, and Malagos could give him the uh, Malagos' Fireball, which would provide him with the burn damage necessary to close out the game. Right. Not this turn, because the escape Mana Saber was killed. But he'd also be presenting threats. Language Hacker would have to heal and deal with the different things. See what's in here first. That might affect uh, what he wants to go for. So Puzzle Box of Yogg-Saron or the Polymorph. Uh, I, I definitely like Puzzle Box of Yogg-Saron because it's always lethal. Malagos, though, like you said, could end up providing him the burst anyways to kill. Finds a Fireball. Wait, uh, Malagos' missiles is a lot of damage, too, right now. Ah, uh, yeah, but I feel like with the it's fireball... It's lethal that goes all face. Time runs out on me. What to do? Mm. To Not quite, right? Oh, wait, he could, like... Yeah, no, 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 you just fireball. You just get the fireball. <laughs> yeah. you get too now he, about it. he forces Language Hacker to kill every minion. And heal. And then, yeah, which he can't. Or steal his hand. Say your thoughts at last. Now. So, devolving missiles. Do you want to use that? And then fire. I guess you uh, fireball something, and then you devolving missiles. Uh, he might fireball and heal. I guess you want to dump a card. Yeah. No! Uh, He's dead. Yeah, GG. <laughs> <laughs> oh, he can fraught. Nope, he's dead. Oh, no, because he can't use it yet. He has one more turn to heal. Um, so you take his Galakron, because that's the... Oh, no, because then he could Potheosis his... Mind render, or yeah, his mind render. Um, what to do? Yeah. What to do. If you so play, I think you have Potheosis. Play... 
Well, I'm just thinking about giving the hand back. If you play stealth and you play Apotheosis, isn't he just going to play Murzon and he has a chance of doing that what to do? anyways? What to do? You don't want to give him yeah. life gain, right? You yeah, wanna, I guess... He's basically trying to eliminate his possibilities. Yeah, I guess if you play Murzon, you still have an 8-8. Eight eight, so even if he Apotheosis... Well, Murzon casts Frost Nova, so he can't Apotheosis anyway. Ah, yeah, you're right. You're right. So and, Murzon well, is better. It, it would cast Frost Nova, but it... The, it's the order, right? Um, yeah. Alright, I'm just gonna steal Galakron, I guess. We well, could play. Play Murzon right back, but the battle cry doesn't activate, so he's dead either way. It's looking bad. Anything so from knows... Disciple of Galakron. Right, so he knows about. Fireball. I want He's real dead. Okay, so if he plays uh, Galakron, he gets Fate Weaver. Fate Weaver can discount stuff. Um, he might be able to get like Sandhoof Water Bear. No, it doesn't do enough. Hmm. Anything from Ray is dead? Um, no. Be born again. Uh, I mean, he could raise dead, mind render a Lucia, and then fireball. But then he's dead on the board because it's seven damage. Yeah. Wait, no. Now you can do this. Oh, raise dead, mind render Lucia, and then fireball. Because he he gave up his ping for the Galakron. Uh, oh, that was it though. That was it, though. If he Close. hits mine, yeah. If he hits mine, render Lucia from the uh, raised dead, and then he fireballed the the uh, one of those minions. He wasn't dead because No Hands Gamer was Galakron. So good on Language Hacker to spot the one out. Uh, but unfortunately, to, to doesn't get live it. barely. It's it's more like a puzzle. Yeah. It's not really an out. <laughs> it's more like I mean, how do you survive? It could have been an out because the deck has no burn damage outside of Zephyrus. And if he can just keep controlling the state of the board, he's got Shadow or Deaths to deal with the dragons from Dragon Canal. So I was like, yeah, Puzzle Box might be able to deal one damage, sure. Um, but uh, maybe he calls his way back. I don't know. Uh, at the end of the day, though, No Hands Gamer. Aggressive playstyle works out. I like it. That's right. And now we go to Priest versus Druid. So it, I thought it was going to be a really super long game to fatigue, but he found an aggressive line and ends up paying off here. As we turn to Survival Druid, going up against guard with the Guardian Animals. Going up against the Galakron Priest. Galakron Priest for Language Hacker. I mean, it's been kind of, uh, it's been banned a lot. It hasn't been played too many times. Uh, I got banned five times in Language Hacker series. But it was two and one going into today. And now with these two losses, it's finally dipped into the sub 50% win rate. But this is a matchup that Nail Hands Gamer is not happy to see. Uh, Priest should have the the number of Druid, <clears throat> especially with all the removal tools that it, uh, Priest has, um, highlighted by the Plague of Death. Like the start from Language Hacker. Oh my gosh. You think if he picks Lightning Bloom, Lego Tracker's going to call his bluff and mind render <laughs> and, and ruin his life? Well, I guess it's interesting because mind render can mess with ramp, but like he played his spell immediately. You know, he would like if, if yeah. he was holding it. Yeah, not really. There's not really too much that you can do about this Veil Weaver. I don't think it's worth using a Bog Beam early because I think it messes your curve up a little bit too much to try and go for it. So just kind of let Priest do its thing. Interesting that he attacked it though, because now Language Hacker could justify just renewing it straight up. Okay. Hmm. Wait. Whoa. 
power word feast. Share your thoughts with the class now. Oh wow. Just going for it immediately and just gonna dump his stuff. The interesting yeah. thing about this kind of dynamic too is you know, now with no coin, no innervate, is no hands camera gonna be stranded a little bit here. No minions even die with Ray's dead. Yeah, Playing this is really flare. smart. Because now uh, Langrotaka knows that he can't cast Ray, Ray's dead because nothing has spawned, so he's giving him uh, a useless AoE, Power of the Feast, which is useless, and a Ray's dead that he can't cast. And now Lango Attacker, because he knows the hand too, um, so he knows what value he'd get from playing Mind Render again uh, if he were to get it back uh, from Ray's Dead. So nothing right. good right now because he knows that he has three minions plus a Bog Beam. Well, what's funny is that No Hands Gamer also is aware of the rate. Yeah, <laughs> this dynamic is very interesting because you can get that Lucia back. Um, or just power word feast. Yeah, yeah. That's probably just better. see what's there. The Sathic Veil Weaver, Grave Rune. Hmm. I think Renew is worth using here as well. Yeah. I put the Divine Holy Smite. That's actually huge if he does. Raise dead what? again. Another raise dead? Okay, Lazul scheme. That's uh, just another spell that he could cycle. Right. <laughs> another <laughs> renew! <laughs> Isn't it better to attack and then renew? Like yeah. attack with his 1 3 and then renew the 1 3? If he wants to pressure it, otherwise he can just ship it face. Power word. Yeah. Fusion or power infusion and a holy ripple. Oh my gosh, what a turn! Interesting turn to say the least. And now, because of the stat line that Lazul scheme has made No Hands Gamer's ability to remove that Sethic Veil, Veil Weaver impossible. Well, unless Iron Bark gives him something that I'm not thinking of, like Wrath. <laughs> if only. Forbidden words would cost the rest of his mana, but he would remove it. The Alucia. He's also aware that Alucia can come back to the raised dead. Master, Master spell. spell. Uh, this game is so weird. <laughs> it's right. Uh, all right. So, so we can get another Alucia, but it's useless right now. But it's going to be good for the future. But the power infusion lines up just super well against this massive minion. Sure. And finally, some ramp here. Uh, for no hands gamer can start unlocking this pan, but maybe too little too late. Uh, actually, I don't think so <laughs> because language hacker says one minion, but it's a minion that's huge. He could power infuse it again next turn. And race dead guarantees mind render is the only minion that's died for language hacker. Right. And he knows four out of the five cards in hand. Yeah. Um, <laughs> He couldn't play them because Mind Render would cost two and then another four mana. He knows there's three five mana minions. Right. Yeah, just dump the Holy Ripple. Hit him for eight. Wow, what a face by Language Hacker. <laughs> <laughs> really? He, he, he's thinking about hand size here. He's like, yeah. is my Synthic Veil Weaver really going to die? Uh, I mean, it could, and you really just want the Mind Render. That's all you want from the Raised Dead, so you might as well just use it now. Yeah. Oh, the Master, the spell, master is spell is actually kind of nuts. Yeah, it's crazy. But still not really making any significant headway right now, because yeah. now we've entered the territory where if No Hands Gamer plays things like Twilight Runner just on the board, uh, Shadow Word Ruin is going to, well, live up to its name. Yeah. Um, as well as the two, oh, sorry, three Breath of the Infinites. Now that's um, a priest hand right there. Yeah, that's a priest hand. I'm kind of tempted to go for the Alucia again. 
Oh, wait, no. If play you play Lucia, your opponent plays Murazon. Mm. And then he gets to... Oh, no, but then you get Shadow Word Ruin right back. Okay, so... You play <laughs> if you play a Lucia, you have the opportunity to play the Twilight Runner and really like mess with their card draw. They play they feel like they have to play the Murzond. Um and then you can just <laughs> destroy everything. Dan, it's just a puzzle. Yeah. So that's one line. A really annoying, difficult puzzle. Don't keep your thoughts to yourself. Oh, jeez. What do you even dump? A Breath of the Infinite? Um, yeah, probably Holy Nova. Holy Nova, yeah, just because it's more expensive, Breath of the Infinite. Also here, heals, so more mana efficient. Wow, this Druid deck looks... Looks so weak without Guardian Animals or just card draw in general. Yeah. It's just going to get cleaned up pretty easily. You can Breath of the Infinite, Crystal Power, trade in the 1-1, one, one, uh, and then hopefully the second Breath of the Infinite will clean up the uh, Death Rattle effect from the Teacher's Bet. One mana remaining, sure, you can fit in a Draconic Studies. This is a play that stuck out to me immediately. Um, I mean, maybe some merit to Murzon if he just wants these beasts, but with this, how his hand is, I feel like he just wants to... Uh, keep cleaning up the board because he knows that No Hands is stuck with some pretty dead stuff. Well, looks like he discovers a uh, dragon and it could be. I mean, he could start putting meaningful presence on the board. Ysera is kind of a big deal, but like he already had big dragon in the form of Murzond. Quickly. Sarah is an easier big dragon to just plop on the board. Yeah. Uh, if for, for some reason No Hands Gamer has a weak turn, which he might. He might. I mean, an overflow he would be right just super good here. Lightning Oof. Bloom is terrible. Yeah, it's arguable that No Hands Gamer might not have might not be incentivized to play both of these Anubisoft defenders because he has to start thinking about. What he can draw at the end, the, at the beginning of next turn, that can change all of this. I and think it's pretty much just his overflow or survival of the fittest. Also, I I don't know why he didn't play the Anubisat defender in the left if he's not going to play both, because the Anubisat defender in the, on the far left side, language attacker knows is there because it was there when he mind rendered. So he does end up playing both, so it doesn't matter in this instance. But if he was thinking about it, he should have played the one on the left first. Right. Um, because that's information that Language Hacker already has, so at least he can hide something. But now Mind Render is completely off the table. His Language Hacker should know that his hand is way more valuable uh, than No Hands Gamer and that he's struggling to find plays. So sure. Mind Render is effectively off the table until No Hands draws a bunch of cards or Language Hacker dumps these very valuable cards that he has. And yeah, this is, I mean, sure, two, three fives on board, unless you're going to top deck uh, Survival of the Fittest. Uh, this is going to be the best chance he can to just plop down a big dragon. Wow! Oh, I mean, yeah, it's, it's a good draw. It's okay. But, uh, Language Hacker has a check through Shadowward Ruin. He also can play yeah. Murazond and then Shadowward Death. Also true. What? That would kind of be pretty cool. <laughs> that would be pretty swag. Not gonna lie. And now No Hands has to figure out if he wants to push face or if he wants to try and kill off this uh, this Ysera and pick up a little value of these cards instead of rushing it down. There are two natural Shadowward Ruins in Lightning Attacker's deck. In any other situation, if there was only one copy, maybe I'd consider going face because it just doesn't seem like he's winning this game with the current position, but with two Shadowward Ruins in the deck... Oh, yeah. I mean... Oh, Marizan. yeah, he's going for it. Clears oh. the board. That's beautiful. Way better than Shadow Order Ruin. Yeah, I, I think that's going to be too much because the survival of the fittest is to help you 
deal with comeback mechanisms, but... Well, Acera is pretty nice. No card draw immediately, though. My dream is your nightmare. I'm pretty sure, from Language Hacker's perspective, just has to outlast his next turn, and I think he'll be good to go. Time Rip already has a pretty good application here. Lot that can be picked up from Ray's dead. Actually, not that much. It's just Mind Render, Sethic, Disciple of Galcron. That's it. Hmm. Yeah, I like it. You're really safe enough to play things like Ray's dead right now. I'm kind of just thinking about time rip and like what you can do immediately with that. But yeah, Sethic Bail Waver comes back, then you can time rip. <laughs> And then play the 7 9 Laughing Sister. Yeah, this is super over here, unless Snow Hands Gamer has the Dream Portal that will basically stop Language Hacker's tracks. I think it would have to be something kind of amazing as well. Alternatively, maybe instead of drawing the Dream Portals, maybe he gets the Overflow first. Okay. Okay. Needs a lot of taunts. A lot of that Yikes. Spell Burst 4 6 taunt so it doesn't die to Shadow and Ruin. Guardian animals. Okay. Yeah, that draws. That's a start. As uh, Lake Thrasher and the uh, Twilight Runner. I think so. Is one more teacher's pet as well. Yeah. You All pack right. and you kill the Mirazon and you draw cards. Oh, I guess he wants to kill the Laughing Sister because at least he can target the Mirazon. That makes sense. Yeah, I think. I guess you just play. I mean, he could still kill Marizond with uh, yeah, Crystal Power. Yeah, play the cards. Yeah. Yeah, that's a yeah, board. I think it was more. I think it was more comfortable leaving up the Laughing Sister, and um, I think that's because. I knew the hand of Language Hacker, so I think that's oh. kind of caster vision coming into play here. He finally gets his claws. Oh! All right. Nice. That's six burst damage right there. Sure. Um, Language Hacker has lethal with uh, mine. <laughs> Render in the claws. <laughs> hmm. You you yeah he does. Breath of the Infinite. You trade. wait. No hands, gamer. He shouldn't have done that. He shouldn't have attacked. Yeah. <laughs> because it's perfect information for everybody. He knows that there's a mind render in hand because he played Praise Dead when there was only a mind render that had died. So he knows that's there. Wow, that's actually kind of that's awesome. I think Language Hacker so sees that. Attack Breath of the Infinite. Mind render. Play three claws. He's dead. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, his gamer knows. I mean, he had to have the removal to get through that, but I mean, a priest dealing two damage. Like, it could have been Holy Nova, it could have been Breath of the Infinite. A lot of things that could have happened. Oh my gosh. That is awesome. Wow. That was cool. Priest doing priest things. Language Hacker is going to take the series 3 to 2 in advance to play Bloody Face for a top four spot on Championship Sunday. Woo! Now that's and a way to end the series, TJ. That's actually pretty fun. I like yeah, that. Like, <laughs> language Hacker took so long because he's like, there's no way. He's like, there's no way that that just happened. Like, wait, <laughs> three claws? What does claw do again? Oh, yeah, two damage? That's six. I got him. I know. Oh, yeah, nice. It, a fun way. Very <laughs> unusual. Um, really weird. In that case, really weird. the Breath of the Infinite was like a great draw <laughs> in that yeah. situation. Um, yeah. Well, he had another one in hand already. Uh, yeah, you're right, actually. So, yeah. funny enough, Language Hacker just had that lethal and then no hands gamer needed to not attack. But that's not an interaction you often see, and I'm sure that no. Luke will be back. Uh, he's going to be playing Inspire Bat later today, but for now, that leads us to our winner's match, Bloody Face versus Language Hacker. Um, so, we're going to take a break, 
And when we come back, we're going to get the first player from Group B through to Sunday here at Hearthstone Grandmasters for the Americas. Stay tuned. We'll be back in just a second.